Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in once again to Super Mario Diagnostics. Today uh, it's going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be a diagnosing video. I'm actually going to do a rig rundown of my diagnostic cart. <clears throat> Some people have reached out and told me that they wanted to see this video, so I'm going to go ahead and make it for them. Uh, this is by no means a showing off video. There's not much to show off. It's a Harbor Freight cart and, um, you know, a lot of the things that I've owned and that I own are really uh, upgrades to equipment that has broken in the past you know my laptop my scope you guys know about that one uh my power probe you know a lot of things just broke and i had to upgrade so um i don't want anyone thinking that <clears throat> i'm the show off type i'm really not i'm pretty cheap <laughs> or frugal as some might call it um and i just want to share this to maybe um get some feedback on how i can improve how i can become more efficient because let's face it having one of these uh, setups can be a little time consuming um <clears throat> but there, there are ways to mitigate that kind of uh time uh, that you need to use this kind of setup or maybe somebody can learn from maybe somebody can take away some kind of tips from the way i set up my uh my uh, cart so let's get on with it so we're gonna go ahead and start from the top um most people like to put a mirror image across both screens if you press the screen button uh, a lot of people like to put duplicate and they'll mirror the same exact image top to bottom but I don't like to really do that I like to put extend it takes a little getting used to but um, all in all I, I really like it um, it allows me to view two separate things at the same time um, it takes a little getting used to you have to go to the right you know in instinctively you want to go up right <laughs> but that's not how it works you just have to go to the right and uh make that happen i can use i can also rearrange it however i want i love it um <clears throat> this is a monitor a friend of mine uh, sold me great price couldn't pass it up so went ahead and did that i also like to have um convenience and my mouse helps me out with that um one of the shortcut buttons is um, a minimize button we could uh, see this here you press this button and it minimizes it and if you press the other button it goes to the home screen and you could bring it back as well and also um, let's say for this page here I'm gonna bring it up over here uh, if I want to go back this mouse has a back button and a forward button as well you know anything in the name of convenience I say it's a it's a good good thing to to do uh, i've got my uh, <clears throat> foldable tray here um had to get this online because all the stores whoops all the stores <laughs> around the area were sold out so i uh, had to get that one online and my pico is actually set up over here i've got a hook that i could take remove whenever i want to uh, go mobile and pretty much magnetic hooks to hold my leads and I'm gonna set you guys up so that we could take a look uh, inside the drawers um, and explain what I got in there. Real quick, one thing before I get to the drawers, I forgot to mention, I always keep a fan on my uh, underneath my laptop to keep it cool. The last thing I need is to ruin this investment. This is a, a laptop that I replaced. My old one broke and that's what happened there. So, And let's start off with the upper left drawer. I call this my lead drawer. I've got um, basically some attenuators, the Pico ones, and one of the Hantec 20 to 1. I've got all my alligator clips. I love these things. I've got my secondary uh, cop probe from Pico. And the one I was using before, that one with the mix sig. Uh, love this thing. I also have the secondary leads to that. The, oh, the parking sensor lead. I've yet to use this, but only a matter of time. I got these repairable back probes. Love these things. Um, I I got no complaints there. Um, some fuse pullers, really, just for you know self-explanatory reasons. I've got these back probe pins that really I haven't used them yet, but I'm, I think I'm thinking about starting to use them. Uh, I I do approve of back probing responsibly. This uh this is for my amp clamps that I will be showing soon. They're basically allow me to put an extension or straight to the pico and connect them with the banana jacks in which they come 
onto the next drawer is my transducer drawer. Um, these are my compression leads from a snap-on kit. I don't even use the gauge anymore, to be honest with you. If I need to use the gauge, I'm just going to go for a transducer. It's I love the visual. This is a pressure pulse sensor for intake, exhaust, and crankcase pressures. This was made by Michael Nicholson. Some of you guys might know him. If you don't, look him up. He could hook you up with a sensor. Great sensor. It's a piezoelectric sensor, so it's not for fuel. Uh, I'm not sure about coolant, but... I, I haven't tried it yet. That's what I got these other these other transducers for. This is my original transducer that I had. It was a Fluke PV350, and this is the third one. The first one I, I bought, I regretted it. I bought it. Guys, I don't buy anything new. I buy a lot of things used. It's probably one of my biggest faults. I'm pretty cheap or frugal, or whatever you call it. The first one I bought was the one that you can, it looks terrible on a scope. It looks like a New York skyline on a on a pressure trans uh, transducer waveform on an in-cylinder transducer uh, waveform it looks like buildings it doesn't look like a nice slopes so i bought a second one for like 50 bucks on online and i was using that one without a problem for a good year and then something happened to it i had to upgrade i had to buy another one and uh i got it for i got that one for very cheap online and it was for parts i had it as a backup and this is basically a frankenstein out of those two um i had to change the lead as you can see this this um shield here and this is a little bent but that's not a problem i don't need to stick it into a multimeter or anything like that uh it works just fine i'm not getting rid of it anytime soon and obviously we have the pico wps 500 transducer love this thing um Self-explanatory, those of you who have a Pico scope, um, this is the way to go. <coughs> and it's rechargeable. I love the features. It's amazing. And also, I could change this out for when I'm doing fuel. I could change this out. I have this, this fitting already for my fuel setup, fuel pressure setup. And we have a Mighty Vac kit of, you know, vacuum fittings. Um, basically, anywhere you need it to go. And obviously, all the hoses and fittings, you know, intake line exhaust line this is a rigid line it's a, it's pretty exhaust it's pretty handy and all the fittings that go with the uh compression hose here this is a universal compression hose for the wps 500 um pretty convenient i like it and obviously my extensions to go to my pico scope um bnc female to female love it um great stuff let's move on to my next drawer Sorry for all the noise, fellas. Let me move you guys over here. This is the Smart Bob. Uh, Self-explanatory. I didn't want to go back and forth buying different ones. I figured, you know, buy it once and be done with it. My two amp clamps from PicoScope. Uh, high amp clamp and then obviously the mic, um, not the micro, the mini amp clamp and they come with banana jack leads whatever you want to call them <coughs> and this is actually my first transducer setup it's a 5 volt regulated setup i bought it online this guy made me a two inputs for transducers and one map uh sensor uh for vacuum haven't used it in a long time but it was great to learn from and then obviously two transducers for that one for 300 yeah both of them for 300 psi not bad you know but you always move up <clears throat> this is my chinese amp clamp love this thing uh it is chinese like i said say what you want but this one is actually pretty good cpo5 it's very accurate it's just does just does not well no, i'm sorry it just does not do well overnight um it's um something to do with degaussing I'm not a great, uh, not great at explaining it. These are my secondary leads for the um, plug wire types. One for each color, one each channel, one for each channel. Sorry, love those things. Um, I actually had one before I got the Pico and uh, gave it to my brother along with the Pico scope. I'm sorry, along with the mixing. This is the Fuse Buddies. I had to modify these in order for them to work into certain uh, applications. I uh, got tired of it. Very rigid. 
you know, non-forgiving. Upgraded with AS Wave. No modification necessary. Oh, no modification necessary and very flexible. Not so uh, unforgiving. And you have all three. Love this thing. I use this one the most, actually. But um, <clears throat> have no complaints there. I have no complaints for anything with AS Wave, really. Um, great company. Great products. They're not cheap like I am. So... <laughs> just one of those things uh, let's go on to my next drawer this is my basic electrical drawer I'm going to start off with uh, this, this setup right here you guys have seen this my Innova 3320 love this thing, it's very, very friendly to change the battery it's got a double A in the back if I'm not mistaken if I remember correctly this is an eBay kit 4 leads mail to mail Banana Jack, love this thing because it opens the door to all kinds of um, setup. Well, I'll show you what I mean in a little while. Basically, I don't use regular multimeter leads anymore. I don't bother because I could just use this, put a back probe, you know, put an alligator clip. Just like you would with a scope, pretty much. And I uh, don't bother with the, the limitations of the mo regular multimeter leads, stock multimeter leads. Got my glue for insulation, just in case, you never know. Good stuff. And um, I've got this power probe, little leads here. Love these things. I don't have the AS Wave terminal kit yet, but that'll do for now. I've got my adapters for BNC to uh, Banana Jacks. This is from eBay, got it for like four bucks. It's like a kit of them. It's a female to female banana jack. That's for when I'm using the power probes or when I want to extend, when I want to use all these, all four of these as an extension for a very long lead. Could do that too. A uh, bunch of back probes here. I don't want to have to be worrying about not having them, so I just bought a bunch of them. They're not that expensive, really. And for those of you who uh, watch Scanner Nanner, you guys will know about these T-pins. They're from uh, Office Depot. I don't use them anymore, but when I first started out, this was my go-to thing, my go-to back probe. They're very thick. These are extremely thin, very non-intrusive, very, very thin, but uh, I like them. They do just fine. This is basically the stuff I don't use that much. This I do use. I don't know why it's here. <clears throat> this is my KV probe. My bed of nails. I have yet to use these. I, you know, got them super cheap. But I uh, maybe somebody could tell me what they're really good for. Because honestly, I, I don't see it. This is the load pro. Uh, otherwise known as a tire chalk to some of you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not really hating. Um, <clears throat> it has its place up to a half an amp load, I guess, when it works because it's it's for a big wire. It's already got an intermittent. I, I really have it here just basically sometimes to use this uh, this tip, but really I don't use it that much. And then I got you know alligator to alligator leads, regular multimeter le multimeter leads just in case. Basically stuff I don't really use. Um, heat shrink tubing, self-explanatory. You heat it up, it shrinks. The U isolate, for great for class two diagnosing. Um, before I got this, I had a Cadillac. Had a had to do it the old school way, but with this, it took me about an hour. To be honest with you, it was the right rear door module intermittent. The other tech was changing the battery, and the, that Cadillac, the battery is in the. You have to open up. The right rear door get to the back seat change the battery and as soon as he closed the door bam no start uh couldn't get the key out <laughs> and then it had a con uh, no no calm basically so he was like all he did was change the battery so it ended up being the door hinge the wiring at the door hinge they basically broke and uh if i would have had this it would have brought it down so much it would have brought down that time so much faster but um that was a while ago and uh, for those of you who have seen my Suburban video, this is that um, O2 
heater circuit sensor uh, basically makeshift tester but in that video the bulbs are working I've since changed it <laughs> and I have also random O2 uh, connectors here in case I want to do the same thing I've got this uh, crimper here from Thomas and Betts my previous job let me keep this this is an awesome crimper um, very great design some other um, crimpers have a very weak design and it usually ends up being loose or you know not holding uh, that's why I don't use this uh, for that I only use it to automatically st strip my wires this is uh, one of the very few things I have from snap-on uh, wire stripper crimper <clears throat> I barely use it but it's good to have in a pinch you know sometimes this doesn't fit so well and the angle you have to have it at an angle so this you could just in and out I don't really buy expensive stuff I don't know why I gave into this but anyway it's good to have uh, another thing from that you might have seen from scanner danner is the OTC 36333 otherwise known as the scanner danner test light <laughs> love this thing it's only 175 milliamp draw but it's um it's it's it has its place just like any test like any tool this one i don't use anymore it's harbor freight pcm friendly really it's just resistance to ground it shows whether it's power or ground um like i said i don't really use it anymore those of you who have seen my mazda miata video uh this would have been much more uh useful when that car came around to deep in the uh connector this is a deep pinning kit. I got it from eBay. Super cheap. Um, Self-explanatory, really. Um, I have it there. Haven't used it much, but great to have. So let's move on to our next drawer. Um, let's start off with what's on top. The secondary ex um, extension lead, basically. It's... Um, great for those honda acuras that have a five volt um, input from the pcm and everything's within the coil so uh you you could put a current clamp around that and and diagnose it like that but sometimes i i just like to see the secondary so that's why i have them um the spark plug testers um one of these zaps me every now and then i don't use these anymore i just hook up the scope i like to get a visual get some known goods barely use them but good to have in a pinch you can never go wrong with a stack of uh electrical tape um if you ever need some i got you <laughs> um liquid tape good to have i use it all the time i keep it face down um that's to ease so that it doesn't become dry up top and then impossible to open sometimes uh, it's just a tip I got from Dave DeCourcy's video. Um, I'll put a link in the description for those of you who haven't seen it. Uh, <clears throat> some torches for heat shrink. Self-explanatory. This is a power probe. Um, short finder. Great tool to have. Just got to know its limitations. Know uh, the conditions under which to use it. You have to isolate the circuit. Yada, yada, yada. Got this from uh, Tooltopia.com. Great company, great prices. I actually thought they were like scamish because of the prices that they had. I was like, I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe the prices. It's just ridiculous. I'm not sponsored by them. I wish I was. But uh, great tool to have. Love this thing. Has its place. It's approved in my book. We got a Power Pro 4 here. This is the second one I have. The first one is had an had an issue with the top here um <clears throat> great company called them up and told them hey listen something's going on with the top here they said all right we'll send you another one they didn't even ask for the old one back but a uh, great tool to have those of you who who have never used this if you have a, P a power probe 3 trust me you will love this thing tooltopia has it for like not that much money really this one is another one I bought from Tooltopia. This one I bought actually from a Snap-on truck. I paid paid a good amount of money, like two fifty for this thing, and Tooltopia has it for like half price. Um, hook, that one I did get from Tooltopia after learning my lesson from the number from four. Love this thing. Um, 
has certain features that are very valuable to me uh, if i want to keep it overnight for a parasitic drain um i could put it in a min max feature leave it there not have to scope it leave it scoped if if i need to i would but if i don't necessarily want to have my setup all night running i'll do this this is great for finding shorts as well it has adjustable circuit breakers leave it on latch mode turn it on if it breaks the circuit breaker kind of like a pulsar those of you who are familiar with a pulsar tool but it's not as fancy the pulsar will let you know exactly how many amps tripped it um this one doesn't but still still a great tool to have there are other features that i can't remember right at this moment but definitely wor worth looking into great great tool and that is pretty much it for this all my drawers here and uh let's go ahead and finish off with the bottom section i've got a bluetooth rechargeable printer and a fan barely used this the other job that i had uh when i was doing flat rate the guy was he couldn't even buy another printer i mean come on <clears throat> got that printer for like 50 bucks on ebay a lot of the things i get on ebay <laughs> and finally i just got this this is actually pretty useful and i recommend it for anybody who has any electronics backup battery plus search protector the only thing that's connected to the battery is the monitor itself there's no battery on the monitor obviously everything else is connected to the search protector um the primary reason why i got it was for search protection we get uh cutoffs here every now and then but <clears throat> one of the other things i bought it for was for the battery before getting that i would have to turn off the monitor go to the other car plug in my monitor or plug in my extension that you know everything else is battery the laptop's battery the printer's battery so <clears throat> and the fan is not battery so one of the features that i like about it the most is really that i could just you know disconnect it move my box wherever i need to i haven't checked how long it'll take i probably have a good five minutes but um move wherever i need to and reconnect it when i get to my next car and good to go but really it was just for the search but that's a nice little perk to have um i hope you guys enjoyed this video it's my uh my little rig it's uh it gets the job done for me uh where, where can i improve uh what did you like about it what didn't you like about it um thanks for watching and uh don't forget to hit like share subscribe comment let me know your thoughts and i uh, hope you enjoyed this one hope i didn't forget anything and uh till next time